I'm a product of the 60s, and what happened then is we had a lot of, the, we lost the movement because of COINTELPOL, which is the counterintelligence program of the FBI, and also black power pimps, weak black men, and people who didn't understand who they needed to protect and stop looking for Jesus to come again. Jesus no come again. If he come again, he'll come again in your name. Whatever your name is, you're the best that we have. So all the saviors and the cult of personality is gone. It's all here in the information. The information is being put out so strong and so dynamic that white supremacy has begun to move strong against it. Hostile. For example, I've had a, a gig in Durham, North Carolina, never been there. I had a gig in uh, Detroit. And if the Jews had anything to do with the people, the organizers' money, if it's a campus or if it's a, uh, uh, you know, one of our community groups that take money from the enemy, then they said, he's on our blacklist. See what I'm saying? So that's what's taking me so long getting this book out. They squeeze us. Too many people in the black books revolution has capitulated to that type of pressure. I use it as a badge of honor. Because I say, if my enemies say I'm moving so fast that they have to try to cut off the flow of my capital to get my books out, to get the tapes out, and to lecture, then we're on the right track of taking them down. Because the object is to take them down. If, in fact, people don't subscribe to we're in a state of war, then they play with these people. And they try to make some money. See? But if you are serious about them, and you understand we're in the middle of a black holocaust, that we must end here and now, then you act a different way. So all they can do is slow my roll. They will never stop it. But they're buying up some distributors. They're buying up some people. If I name their names, it would shock you. For now taking money and expanding. Name them, brother. And Malcolm used to say, well, I'll name them in private. I'll name them in private. But Malcolm used to say, too black, too strong. If you got black coffee and you put a little cream in it, what kept you awake will now lull you to sleep. And they know this. So you have to keep on, you have to do your research. Because then it, what'll happen is, publicly, if you step to somebody, you dissin too many people, they will then isolate you and say, now you're talking about black people. You see what I'm saying? So we're gonna deal. This isn't even criticism with affection. I say we're having people who sell out. We have people who won't come to speak to a community group unless they give them four or five thousand dollars. You can't win no war that way. You're not even at war. You're only into commerce. So I'm glad y'all could come to Black Media on Sunday and spend a little time. I know the store is usually open. I mean, closed on Sunday. So I'm happy I could come through. Uh, I couldn't get in on Saturday. I didn't get in until Saturday night. What we're going to do is I'm going to combine the three books for the first time. Because I just don't put a book out for fun. You know? So I'm going to write a book. It has to have some sort of continuity. It has to have a reason to exist. It must have an enemy to aim at. It must have a problem to attempt to create, to correct, or to help create, uh, correct some problems. Because one person or one book can't correct any problem. It can only lend to it. Culture Bandits, uh, uh, culture bandits Volume 1. I've dealt with the musical culture of our people. Now the reason why I even deal with culture band is because I've seen when I was in school that it's a struggle for our minds as I watch our brothers and sisters fight from Desert Storm, Panama, Grenada, Vietnam, Korea, <coughs> World War I, World War II, all the way back to when Abraham Lincoln and, 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 uh, talked us into helping them win the Civil War, that it was the African warrior that was the strongest part of their military machine. However, you say, well, how can we fight for them if during the Revolutionary War, their so-called Revolutionary Bourgeois War, it wasn't about nothing, about them banging their mom. England, they banged them. Think about it now. 
They said, look, I wanted to give y'all an opportunity. We want to colonize this place. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you out of the prisons. You white prostitutes, I'm going to let you out of prostitution. I'm going to let you go to this place we're going to call America or call all the colonial states. All I want from you and the mentally ill, let them out. All I want from you is send me back some bread. I call it taxes. Send me some of that money you make. You know what I mean? Could be gold, could be anything over there. Go on back. So they came in after 13 colonies. Now this is our African interpretation of what they did. The 13 colonies be that they were not only but thieves and prostitutes and crazy white people. And the same white people ain't saying nothing, so you know what kind of shape they're in. They got together and said, we ain't sending mom nothing, <laughs> okay? We ain't giving her nothing. I'm a thief, I ain't been giving nobody nothing. So we're going to take this land and we're going to keep it. Mom is a thousand miles away across the sea. She can't deal with this. And they took, they made them 13 colonies, one nation, and banged their mom, <laughs> Mother England, who freed her even though they weren't no good. Then you have the daughters of the American Revolution come along and say, my father and mother was in the Revolutionary War. And I always say, oh, which, 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 your mom was a whore? <laughs> you say, wait, 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 no, no, no. Your mom was a whore? My father, your father was a thief or was he insane? Because they, that's all they let roll over here, okay? They say, oh, oh, and that breaks down that elitistness of white supremacy. So we have to look at things from an African point of view. So that's what happened. We have to see how is it that we continually go to war for an American war machine and die and won't lift a finger for an African. How is that? When I was young, I said, it has to be the mind. It has to be the mind. It must be a brainwashing component to their system of oppression that we must analyze, break down, and tear asunder. And that's when I started researching culture bandits. My cab driver who just dropped uh, uh, me off here was from Ghana. And he was saying in general conversation, homeless people. He said, huh, in Africa there's no such thing as homeless people because we have an extended family. But you guys don't subscribe to the extended family in any, really, in any real form from your heart and soul. Therefore, you have homeless people. They have problems that the state, you want the state to take care of. You want the government to take care of. And I listened and I didn't say nothing. I said, yeah, cool. I know where you're coming from. So therefore, it's culture. We must, re we must seize our culture. That's one thing. Culture, a lack of culture leads to menticide, leading you being exploited for other people in interest. I don't care whether you're in the so-called Caribbean. I don't care whether you're in uh, 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 Africa. I don't care whether you're here in the belly of the beast or in the Pacific. Africans are exploited because of menticide, because they do not have a binding culture. They let somebody take it away or they let other people interpret it. So we came up with culture bandits. There's some definitions we must understand to function. People throw the word culture around very loosely. They take the European point of view that culture is dolls and dances. You know, clothing. Culture is everything you do, how you do it, when you do it, how often and why. Therefore, everything falls under the realm of culture. We must, we must understand that everything we do is culture. For example, if the white boys say, dang, rap music, boy, God, black people are talking to themselves in a cadence, in a use of language that we don't understand. <laughs> they don't understand what you're saying. That's a product from slavery. When the slave master would be standing right there, and you'd have to talk to the brethren or the sistren without him knowing what you're talking about. Therefore, we manipulate the English language better than anybody on the face of the earth. 
So if you remember when rap music first began, they said that black English wasn't worth nothing. That you're backwards. And at the same time, every addition to the dictionary has come from black English. Everyone from ain't to dis. So you can talk right in front of them. And as soon as they can decode what you're saying, you change the language. Be cool means chilling. And we always tell each other, amen, okay, be cool, man. Because as a slave, you say you cannot react to slavery. You cannot react to the police. You must always be on guard. So you're going to be cool. Hey, man, be cool. So what you doing, man? I'm chilling. So they just upgrade it. And the mechanism moves, the language moves, the language is alive. We make it talk. We, instead of saying disrespect, we say, yo, man, you know, homie over here, white boy, you know, he dissing everybody, man, ain't giving up no props. He don't have the slightest idea what you just said. <laughs> the slightest, and he'll walk up to some yo-yo and say, well, what does that mean? And some brothers just don't break it down. Well, this is disrespect props, you know, you, you know, you don't get any, you know, you don't get any, uh, uh, you don't get any respect, you know, you know, I mean, you know, you get props when you do something nice. We, you know, we used to, <laughs> in the 60s, mm -hmm. we used to grab people during their break day on if we caught them soul shaking with a white boy. That's a cultural cleansing. One guy with the white paint on, I was wild, no pain on <laughs> <laughs> I was wild and young, you know, and good then now, but, but that's what we used to do. Go, yeah, you do this and do that. And what did they do with that? The Black Power Shake. They made it a sports shake. They are sport athletes. <laughs> because white athletes try to hang with the brothers. Because when you think of physical, you think of us. Because we're high on the evolutionary scale. They know it. So the whole change on language, the manipulation of language, brings about new culture. They have to break it down because they always have to understand what you're saying. So when you say we're going to kick their butt, they want to know that you're going to come to kick their butt. They can't be guessing and going ha 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 he he So they send in the Beastie Boys, Marky Mark, young black teenagers. They send them Snow to get in, in into dance hall. Right? White boy named Snow, Informer. Making up words as he go, playing with the patois. They always invade their culture bandits. See, and it's very important. Another definition, the culture. Everything we do, how we do, when, and why. The mass media. The mass media is the electronic apparatus that hits us all at the same time with the message that white supremacy is cool and blacks ain't worth nothing. Okay? That's the mass media. Whether they're giving you Thundercats a cartoon, whether they're giving you uh, uh, those single girls, Latifah and them. I call it Skeezers Anonymous. How do you go from Queen Latifah into Skeezer? Coon shows. Living color coon shows. How can we say Stepper and Fletcher ain't cool, but Living Color's cool? And now you know what they do? They got this new thing. They brought back your mama. The dozens. And on national television, these niggas will get up and say, your mother's so black, your mother got big living. We ha 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 ha. To African women now, they need their neck busted. But that'll come. The mass media propagates those ideas to everybody. Even fashions. Now take, take a name for instance, Naughty by Nature. Translated, what does it mean? Genetically inferior. I'm naughty by nature. No wonder they put out something like I'm down with OPP. Mm -hmm. So they take the talent of the African and use it against him as culture bandits. They know if they do revolutionary rap, they can't get on. So they'll sell out. And since we don't control our culture, we have people playing for white young businessmen who don't do nothing but make fun of our music and culture. We gotta understand uh, imperialism. Imperialism is to go to somebody else's land and take it, take the natural resources, the land, labor, and resources of a people, 
send it all to your country and drive that country into underdevelopment. Kill who you choose and set up any type of uh, system, economic system for exploitation imperialism. Colonialism is the, the business apparatus to manage that. Okay? Colonialism. Then there's neo-colonialism when you use indigenous people as if they're sham independence to do the same thing the white boy do to make sure all the goods and services and everything goes out of your country into their hand. We suffer from neo-colonialism here in the belly of the beast because our land, labor, resources have been stolen. Our culture has been stolen. And they use these Negro leaders to deliver the goods the goods they deliver. We have to start thinking as a nation. So that is what colonialism, neo-colonialism is. Propaganda means to propagate your ideas. So now that we have those terms, we understand what they're doing is culture bandits. They're moving in on your culture. Then I want to add two. Subliminal messages, because we're going to be talking about the media, <laughs> is when you're talking about one thing, but you're sliding something in underneath. Subliminal, underneath, you know? They do it all the time. For example, there's a commercial, I don't know whether you see it here, for Boku. You ever heard of Boku? Well, it's a drink. And they have this white boy saying, Boku, Boku, Boku is a great drink. He said, who made Boku? What great people made Boku? Who put black grapes together with white grapes? Who put them together? Subliminal message integration. Who, Boku, who did the, uh, did the uh, spacemen really make the pyramids? Boku, Boku, and he's gone. Again, now that it's been proven that they didn't make no pyramids, they say, well, you didn't either. The Martians did it. <laughs> That's so stupid. You know? <laughs> the Martians did it. I said, well, a Martian must look just like me because my ancestors put my face all over. All over. The Olmec heads in Mexico looks just like my brothers and sisters. The pyramids was made by us, but they used that against. Here, somebody can take my chair, my chair here, you. and I can put it back where I got it, and I'll just lean when I have to. Thank you. So, it's important that we understand those things. Now, we understand culture, the importance of culture. It's everything you do, how you do it, how often, and why. Everything we produce fall under the realm of culture. Therefore, either you're dabbling in somebody else's culture or you're creating your own. Or someone's watching you create culture and controlling it economically, controlling the mass media, and then turning it around and using it against you. Classic case of that. Bob Marley, reggae, spun out of the suffering of the masses of our people in Jamaica so they can articulate their pains, their woes, and their aspirations. Okay. To change that around, though, first of all, let me go here. When I was in Zimbabwe, I found out many things about Bob Marley. And I've interviewed Bob many times and met and talked with a great brother, one of the best we ever produced. Okay. But Bob Marley took his money and he, he bought many guns in Zimbabwe. And then did the propaganda to say, stay up Zimbabwe, in the song, Zimbabwe. So he was aiding, making the Pan-African connection. All Africans connected, Pan-Africanism, I should have did that. And when I say Pan-Africanism, I am a Pan-Africanist, but I am a revolutionary Pan-African. It doesn't mean, because all Africans can get together and do some dumb stuff. You know, I'm for revolutionary Pan-Africans, which means changing the social system, busting down white supremacy, snatching our land, labor, and resources back, and getting some retribution for slavery. Okay? Never forget retribution. I know we are kind and gentle and loving people. Yeah. You know? But we got to do it. No white man has ever paid did one minute of time for slavery. Here we got hundreds of millions of people dead in the greatest crime ever known to humanity and not one peck of wood got busted in his head yet. 
No! Oh. Can't you hear the wail of the ancestors? Can't you hear the wail of that woman as she's being raped? Or the baby cut out of her belly and stomp with their dirty boots? Can't you hear the hundred of million people underneath the sea crying? Now, if you take them people who call themselves Jews, so-called Jews, Eastern Europeans, or adapt to our religion, they're chasing 100-year-old Nazis across the galaxies and amongst the stars to pay them back for that skirmish they had that they call a holocaust. What no holocaust? It's about six million people. Six million people? That ain't nobody. We've been dying for 20 centuries. Don't tell me about no Anne Frank. That ain't my problem. That was white on white crime. Never heard that before, huh? Nobody says the mafia is white on white crime. Nobody even deal with that. That's only for black on black crime. Well, each race have its criminal component that has to be dealt with by the masses. That's very important. So if we understand culture bandage street must be made and come to a halt, I had to give it a label. We all do that. I, I didn't have to tell you that they steal our culture. What we did need to know, however, was that if we don't get it back, we will die. We have been dying. We can create culture out of garbage. For example, in Trinidad, the brothers and sisters used to walk along the beach after oil was discovered and cry because of the destruction of their beach and the uh, ecological damage is done by that nasty oil killing the fish, killing the trees, killing the people. They picked up the nasty old drums. They said, look at this. This old nasty drum, 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 oil drum, drum, tune it up. Oil drum, give me some sticks. And make culture out of a negative. Our children, who come from an electronic era, have broken down turntables. And disco music is raging and driving the whole nation insane. You know, led by Donna Summers, who's married to a German with an all-German orchestra playing that garbage. So what happens? They say, we want to make a record. I want to speak about my situation. So, and these turntables won't even, they won't even, they won't even, hey, they won't even, hey, they won't even, hey, whitey ain't no good, whitey ain't no good, and they make culture out of a negative. We are culture. And they follow behind us, picking what we throw out. Oh, I got that, I got that, I got that. You know, Peggy Lee following behind Billy Holiday. Elvis Presley following behind Ruth Brown. He wasn't even following behind a man. Following behind Ruth Brown. Then he come out, you ain't nothing but a hound. Sister sung that. You ain't nothing but a hound dog was sung to a male. Good old Elvis Presley. They won't let him die, because he's the signature of culture banditry. He's the greatest culture bandit known to mankind. You know? I wish I could dig him up and kill him again. <laughs> So you're understanding culture banditry. Now you tie it into book two. Again, there's a reason to put book two. Do a book or don't do it. Book two is the black holocaust. As I travel from place to place, people used to say, Oh, right, I say, yes. You really believe they're trying to kill us? I say, whoa, freeze. What'd you say? Do you really think they're trying to kill us? I don't think they'll kill us all. I say, brother, <laughs> stop. <laughs> don't do that. And now, now, brother, now every city. So I said, if we don't, it's good to make fun of it, but why don't I come up with a tool that gives us a functioning understanding of the Black Holocaust? Traces back to ancient Egypt, tracking from the Persians all the way to AIDS, and you got something, and make it concise, make it small, make it readable, make it dynamic, and you can sell that there's a Holocaust, because there is. So we came up with the Black Holocaust. The results of losing your culture is a continuing holocaust. The book that will be released in January is called Culture Bandits 2, The Annihilation of African Images. And that's where we tie it all in, forever. So now you see why the Jews and the white people are hopping. 
Oh, the canceling, man, don't let him come here. Don't let him talk to him. Come on, man, I can you stop me from talking to my own people. Come on, man, you think you have more juice than you got? He got that kind of juice. He couldn't stop you from coming here, could he? So I have to be here so we can rap. That's all. If you get in the position of saying, I'm only going to speak for $4,000, then you can't talk to your people. Nor should you. Because you're talking commerce instead of how do we get out of this dope jam, out of the black holocaust and back into the sunshine of freedom. And that's our journey. So the black holocaust, you tie it in. You say what everybody knows, that there's a hundred million Africans under the sea alone. First of all, now imagine that the six million tiny little simple little Jews who were sold out of the river by other Jews. Read. They sold each other out. Many times people like Eichmann was a Jew. They didn't say Hitler. Because you can't tell what a Jew is a religion. It's not a race. If you ever subscribe that it's a race, you lose them. You can't find them. Because they're all Becker Woods with them big noses. You know, how you know what a Jew is? That's why they like African slave. Yeah, there's a dark skin one. That's one. Slave capturing. Jews ain't just a white boy. Edward G. Robinson had a big argument with Hollywood. Because the Jews controlled Hollywood. Edgar G. And Edward G. Robinson, Edgar G. Robinson's name was Edward Goldstein. He said, I want to use my own name. He said, you can't use your own name. I want to use my own name. He said, you can't use your own name. Well, compromise. You'll be Edward G. Robinson. Edward Goldstein Robinson. And he played like he was a wasp. <clears throat> and his name was Robinson. <laughs> you know, so they all over the place. I don't go Jew hunting. Jewish is only part of white supremacy who have its own system. Then you have the Illuminati, you have the skull and bones, you have the trilateralists, and on and on. All these configurations of white supremacy that will all get together and kick our butt at any given time. They're going to fight over the, the, uh, the wealth amongst each other. But on the same page, they are when it's time to kick our butt. So we have to deal with them as a whole. A lot of people go on, is this a Jew? Ain't none of them Jews. You know, you know, you got to be from Ethiopia to be a Jew. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? If you ain't from Ethiopia, and all of them got them big old noses and stuff, they're from Eastern Europe. They Croatian and all over there with them people rumbling now. You see how they rumbling? Mm -hmm. Because they're nothing but white tribes. They always have been. Do you remember in our history class? They say Britain and France had a hundred years war. A hundred years. That's a heck of a rumble. That's a long run. <laughs> Was anybody keeping score? I mean, does this ever end? But what does that tell me from an African mindset? I say, oh, I see. You're warlike. You love war. Peace is your abnormal. It's not your norm. I see what's happening with you. No problem. I can deal with it. The genocide of our people <coughs> in Namibia from 1904 to 1907. The Kaiser of Germany killed 16 million Africans in Namibia alone. In Congo, King Leopold killed millions of Africans, cutting off breasts and penises, suffering when you didn't bring in your rubber quota, cutting out tongues, slaughtering you. Grabbing babies and doing a the thing they call a wishbone. Grabbing a black baby now. Like this. One leg here, one leg there. And they used to bet on who could rip the baby completely apart. It is documented. So that's a holocaust. All the way up to, all the way up to Azania, South Africa right this moment. Where good old Nelson Mandela is selling you wet on down the river. Money, 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 <laughs> money. <laughs> Filthiest man that ever walked. But the mass media can make you love your enemies and hate your friends. They told you he was the man. First of all, you have to study who Nelson Mandela was. Nelson Mandela was an integrationist before he went to prison. You have to read the Freedom Charter from the 50s. To know him, how would we know somebody without researching them? We have to find out who they were, what was their ideology, what was their action. 
The ANC has always been co controlled by those so-called Jews of the Communist Party of South Africa led by Joseph Slovo. Joseph Slovo was head of the ANC military, that's why they weren't killing the white people. We have to know that to make a conscious decision on whether I love you or whether you should be discarded. Now, a trick that white, white people like to use, well, here we are in a war against white supremacy. And a voice comes from outside the field. Martin, Martin, come out, come out. Hey, Martin, don't leave the foxhole. Stay here, man. No, I gotta go out while he calling. And when Martin goes out, he gets a Nobel Peace Prize from the enemy. Why would the enemy give you a peace prize if you're doing the right thing? Which is busting him in his butt. Ralph Bunch, who helped establish the state of Israel, come out, come out. We'll give you the Nobel Peace Prize. He leaves our foxhole, gets a prize from us for his service to them. Nelson Mandela, the Philadelphia Medal, the uh, uh, Nobel Peace Prize. Huh? With a whole lot of money, too. Thank you. With a whole lot of money with it. Over $100,000. You cannot be loyal. Two things don't occupy the same space at the same time. You cannot be loyal to us and be getting awards from them. Because people who are loyal to us, they kill. They discredit. They attempt to destroy. So the black, black Holocaust, just to get us to a certain point. Black Holocaust have hit a phase now where they, they have made an analysis that says we don't want to fight African men in the street. I don't care if they ain't got no guns. I don't care if they ain't got nothing. They're deadly. We know it. We won every war with them. They got more heart than anybody i ever seen. So we need a higher form of killing. And they come out of their think tanks and their evil uh, uh, laboratories with cracking AIDS. I call this phase of the Holocaust the invasion of the body snatches. Now they go inside your body and destroy you from within. You never confront them. This is the people who had the mentality to come up with nuclear war. If they had a neutron bomb, still do, that they can drop here and kill all the people and, and the land is not destroyed. Because the land is primary to them and people don't mean a thing. The invasion of the body snatchers. AIDS come out of Fort Detrick, Maryland. They whip it on the people. Have you running off well in the wrong direction? Telling you that <laughs> buying condoms will save you when it's not even a venereal disease. And then they sell you the condoms and they get richer and richer and richer and richer and richer. And richer. Even while they fooling with your mind, they get richer and richer and richer. Crack was discovered because they said, you know something? These Negroes ain't going to never be able to afford no good Coke. Coke was always the white yuppie drug. Can't afford no Coke. They came up with a derivative. Now ain't no BB. B-boy come in no laboratory with his beak and say, I'm gonna get, I'm coming with new drugs, man. You know what I mean? Let me see, get my microscope, man. Where's my beaker, man? You know what I mean? No, mix this with that, man. I went to Kennedy's class one day. That came from sophisticated technology. And it's crack. And they swore it was instantly, instantly, instantly addictive. Now, how many of us know people who have kicked crack? Because ain't nothing in instantly and forever addicted to Africans if they become African-centered. Because it's all in the mind. If you believe that it's addicting, then you say, well, I'll never get off this man. All I can do is get my next hit. How many, especially young sisters, you've seen fight with that disease? That's what it is, it's a disease that they would born you. How do they do it? Look what happens to a sister. A sister does not sell. She's not part of the whole uh, dis distributing apparatus. So she has to sell her body. She has to do the foulest things. 
And the destruction of that sister is the destruction of generations. So it's clever, okay? Demonically clever. The only way they can ever be creative and clever is demonically. You ever notice that? Thanks, bro. The only way they can, when it comes to killing something, they can come up with some ideas. I studied medieval evil uh, uh, Europe during the Inquisition. You should have seen the ways they had to kill each other. You could have seen what they pushed up into each other. I am mean, in the United States when they used to go on the witch hunt. You could see how they used to kill each other. And you know how they can kill you during the lynching. Creatively. Beast debauchery. Is in their culture. So if you're not African centered, if you're in their culture, that becomes part of your life and you have brothers and sisters shooting each other up for a pair of sneaks. Selling your whole race down the river for $25 in a Jeep that you'll keep for three weeks before they lock your butt up. <laughs> and the youth, the youth that got the heart, but the misdirection winds up incarcerated and the hood has no protection. So, crack and AIDS go into the body, invasion of the body snatchers. Ritalin is a drug given to young little babies who are hyped. They don't want to hear nothing. They don't want to hear that it may be that they had cake and soda for breakfast, mm -hmm. or that they had caffeine and soda, mm -hmm. or maybe that they're from a dysfunctional family and has never been taught to discipline. Or maybe that, that like in my case, I used to couldn't sit, shoot, sit still because what they were teaching never made sense to me. And I used to make fun of them. And they throw me out to class. I sit there, and then they tell you, say, okay, you heard, now you heard that bull crap I, I was teaching you, right? Now write it back to me. <laughs> this is called a test. <laughs> I don't think like that. Now as a kid, and then you're following your mother right down on you. Well, just get your lessons. Just give them what they want. But what they want, my, is me. <laughs> you know I mean? They want my mind. They say, you're crazy. I say, okay, yeah, I'm crazy, but I ain't giving up my mind. You give up your mind. Because I can look at a cowboy and Indian picture and see who I should be down with. She said, well, what do you mean? I said, I'm watching television, Ma. Let's go see Roy Rogers, okay? She said, stay down with me. And... Here come the settlers, riding across the prairie. Happy trails. <laughs> <laughs> Got their pots and pans. Back of the wagon, right? Happy trails to you. Oh, it's nice out here today, isn't it? Yes, dear. <laughs> then you hear boom, 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 boom. Now, you know that's people of color. When you hear a drum, they don't even have a drum. You would hear a violin if it was a <laughs> Yeah, boom, boom. I was decoding this as a child said, Woo, I like first, I like the music, right? I can't deal with that happy trail, okay? It's country and western. I don't know nothing about it, I'm only eight. I said, Now watch, Ma. Then the Indians say, Where are you going? As you get in a circle, we're settling. And the Indians say, In my living room? You rolling up into my living room with your box of pants and your ugly little kids, saying you settling in my hood? Where you get that? Because we got guns. And I break it down to her, I say, you see? That don't make no sense. So Thanksgiving, I ain't an Indian, and you can't dress me like a settler. I ain't got nothing to do with Thanksgiving. Really? Not a thing. And after they finish eating the turkeys, Ma, what did they do? They killed all the Indians. Come on, man. I won't be one of them. You know, brother and sister said, you got good hair. Well, I got some Indian in me. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, you go ahead with that, okay? <laughs> I ain't got no Indian in me, all right? I'm straight up blood. Okay? I ain't got no Indian in me. I like this stuff, all right? <laughs> all right. Since I throw the comb away, all right? <laughs> but see, it's cool when you can make the analysis. So I said, well, what about religion? I say, I'm following religion. I'm following God's image. I said, no, you're not. You're warlike. You know, you fight. You know, 
You can be evil. I said, that's God's image. The one that they teach it here. She said, how, boy? Now, now you play with some dumb stuff. You really get skunked here. You know what I mean? So I'm going to play this right. You know? How, boy? And she said, <laughs> and I'm looking up. I said, well, mom. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 when Moses came down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments scene, and he said, hey, I got the stuff, and he looked down, and they praying to a golden idol, and he threw them down. What did Mo do? Mo stepped on a big rock, and he said, all of y'all who believe in the, uh, the Lord God, our God, stand over here. All of you don't keep partying over there. And then the Lord killed everybody over there. I said, that's in the Bible. Sodom and Gomorrah, did he scuff everybody up? It's in the Bible. When he told Pharaoh, hey man, why don't you let my people roll out of there? Pharaoh said, ain't happening. This is mythology, of course. <laughs> I'm going to go with it. <laughs> but he said, Pharaoh said, no, I ain't rolling out of here. What did he do? The, the most powerful God, and I'm talking about their European God. Did he strike them down, uh, Pharaoh down with lightning and then move on from there? He killed the firstborn of everybody. Come on, man. Is that godly? So when I say somebody stepped to me, one of these little white boys stepped to me, mama bust him up. I'm acting in the image of God. And Lot's wife, he said, don't turn around. All right, we know how some women are. She said, I wonder what's happening over there. He turned into a pillow of salt. No, <laughs> come on, man. So what means, and what that mean is, the Europeans say, if you're my enemy, I deal with you thusly because this is the King James interpretation of what went down. Okay. I don't debate religions. I don't diss religions. But when they were pushing that on me, it never could come through the computer. The Cowboys could, if you ever, if you want to ever see a movie that's really good come out of Hollywood, see this movie called Zulu Dawn. Not Zulu. Zulu Dawn. They have a scene, Whitey, you know, lined up in these uniforms, it's 100 degrees outside, cross the river, and to Zululand, right? And one blood stands on the mountain and says, why do you come to the land of the Zulu? You should hear the white boy's answer. Well, the great qu qu queen from across the pond said, this be ours. You see, yeah, and all the brothers said, well, yeah, all right, <laughs> keep coming. And at the end, they kill them all. It's a true story. Kill them all. At the end, they run around with the British flag and all that, having a ball. Uh, that's the history of Zulu. <laughs> How do you come to the land of and other bachelor? Because we're going to take your stuff. But now it's no more confrontational. They're using the technology that they developed because while we was working, they could study. While we was working, they could invent stuff. Why they didn't even, they didn't even suckle their own babies. You know? They didn't even cook their own food. And I, I used to laugh. I told one professor, I said, he said, well, back in the day, we used to die. You die of old age at 40, 42. I said, yeah, because we were cooking. <laughs> that's why you die. <laughs> that's why you die. And to this day, that's the first time they dug it. They said, <laughs> <laughs> but they'd rather die than give up that fried chicken that Colonel Sanders, swear to God, he had the recipe to. You see what I'm saying? You know, they'd rather die of skin cancer than get out of the sun. Simply put, I'd rather die than stay white. That's what it says to me. So women is given to little children and it stunts their growth. It bothers with their hormones and their genes because drugs should not be given to children. Okay? That's an invasion of the body snatches. Crack, aid, wriggling. Then they got a thing called Prozac. Now your society drives you into depression. If you're not African-centered, if you're African-centered, you can predict and see everything going down and make your adjustments. Instead of thinking something wrong with you, something wrong with your family, or something, you know, it's just terrible, I don't know what to do, I'm, I'm discombobulated with you. Once you know white supremacy, you ain't got no problem. You can be broke as you can be and say, I know why I'm broke. But this is how I'm going to have to deal with this. And seriously, if you really want to seriously stop homelessness, you have to acquaint them with white supremacy. How did you get in this condition? There is nothing wrong with you. Systematically designed to drive you to nothing and to decay and be so blown apart that you can't even kick in a door of a border of building, close the door, 
get a day job, hustle for a few pennies, pick this, do that, and get yourself a kerosene heater, and then get just eat off fruits and stuff, because that's what you should be eating off anyway. You know what I mean? And and begin to build your life. You can't build it if you don't know what white supremacy is. So that's the malady. You wouldn't take drugs if you knew white supremacy was the problem. But when you think it's you, and when you're basing that on the off coming out of Eurocentric educational system, there's no way you can find yourself out. Your culture was taken by the culture bandits. And you're in the middle of a Holocaust dying. You know? So they give them Prozac, which drive them clay insane. They kill their children. You know, they kill the whole family. You know, they run out, they disappear. They go crazy and they can never fend for themselves, which brings you homelessness. Then they give you Norplant, invasion of the body snatchers. Put a plant on your arm, a, 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 a patch on your arm that's supposed to be birth control. You know, and, and feeding into your body chemicals that you shouldn't be dealing with. And black people are dying. They give you nicotine patches. And tell you it's nicotine, you don't know what's in that leaking into your body. The invasion of the body snatchers. See what I'm saying? You're dealing with alcohol that you take internally when you get depressed. But a lot of people, see, let me tell you the trick. For years they always taught you, want to have a good time? Have some wine. You get yourself a 40. Yeah, get this. Happy time. Get some gin if you want to feel real frisky. Right? <laughs> but all along, these things are depressants. They take you down. They don't take you up. So then, you're having a tug of war with yourself. You know, drunk all this gin. And you thought you was going to be frisky. And you said, oh, the president, I'm not a man. <laughs> <laughs> Invasion of the body snatchers. Immunization. Oh, man, they want to immunize everybody. The invasion of the body snatchers. <laughs> Chemicals directly inside the body of the people they hate. First of all, black people have yet to come to the point that they hate us. The only person who hates us more than them is Michael Jackson. <laughs> we'll get to that a little later. <laughs> He's the only one who hates us more than white people. Okay? And now they got their foot in him. He can't come home. It's a great lesson. He worked with them. He was down with them. He loved them. He'd rather be under the armpit of Elizabeth Taylor <laughs> than have a nice queen. And now they finish with him and discard him. He can't even come home. Ain't that something? Because when we all get scuffed up, we would like to go home. We'll <laughs> we'll go off the queen, baby. Don't tell nobody I said this, but ow. <laughs> It was those jeans, bro. You say, "Ow!" <laughs> because certain stuff hurt. Boy, you know? So all of that, crack, AIDS, Ridley, Prozac, Norplants, nicotine patches, alcohol, immunization, and on and on and on. My addiction is sugar. <coughs> sugar is, you know what they used to do, and they still do it. They put sugar in baby food. They put it in everything, they pound it in ketchup. <clears throat> and it kills you, and you have a hard time. My queen's trying to stop smoking, and I'm trying to break a sugar addiction. Serious sugar, because I can get down. <laughs> I mean, beyond reason, that's when you know it's addiction. <laughs> when you can bust a whole cake, you know you're wrong. You know you're wrong. There's no way you can do it. You can't eat a, a whole cake and say, well, that was tasty. <laughs> No nourishment, no nutrition, nothing but sugar and mucus. Oh, no, don't even talk about ice cream. Come on, boom. I'm mainlining ice cream. <laughs> Man, but I'm going to break that. I've got that solved because I made the analysis. Once you make the analysis, you can solve the problem. But I can put, the, I can put away a half a gallon of ice cream. Now I don't eat too much food. I get, my wife can cook too. But you know, I eat food among reason. But ice cream and cake, whoa, look out. And it will definitely kill me. So here you have culture bandits, which is the method they mess with our mind. And we're in the middle of a black holocaust. We're in a phase called the invasion of the body snatchers. 
but they don't want to step to you. The reason they want to step to you is real. I mean, you didn't like the verdict in Simi Valley, so you darn near burnt L.A. down. Now, they know they can't manage 50 states on fire. They have people in think tanks, they give hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, you know, if the Negroes really got this, you know, we couldn't handle them. Give my money. Well, they could have asked me. I did it. Well, I gave them five grand. And I told them the same thing. And I, it cost them hundreds of millions to have people in think tanks. And it got FEMA, Federal Emergency Management uh, uh, Agency, with plans of collecting us all that stuff look good on people, but they know you darn well. To collect you and to defeat you militarily, you have to first decrease your numbers with the invasion of the body snatchers. And they get people like Magic Johnson, yeah, I got AIDS. Yeah, that Magic Johnson ain't got, got no AIDS. He is a commercial. He's a commercial for AZT. People die of AZT, not AIDS. Okay? They die of the cure. Poor guy like Arthur Ashe got to do a, a, a blood transfusion. You know what I mean? You know, and uh, your boy uh, Magic, way so magic, who has always been one of the greatest Toms. <laughs> do anything for him, skinning and grinning, you know, anything. That leads us to my presentation. It took a long time to sit there. <laughs> but, you know, you can't just jump into stuff and say, bah, bah, bah. but first try to get us on the same page. We're, we're trying to dismantle their cultural band and all on us to stop the black holocaust. And this stage is the invasion of body snatches where they're using chemicals and stuff against us. And we go to the drugstore and pay a large amount of money to die. So that, I'm not really uncomfortable with that because in war we're going to have our casualties and they're going to have theirs. They don't have no casualties because they have a higher form of killing. Okay? So here we sit and we're dealing with the annihilation of African image. All my life I've been doing remedial work with black people trying to get them to see that they're African. What a ridiculous way to speak. Mm -hmm. But a necessary way. All our lives we will be studying to find our way back home. Spiritually, mentally, and in many cases physically. And we've seen that as long as they annihilate the African image, they annihilate the African image, we come up with Harlem Renaissance. They annihilate the African image, we come up with the 60s. They annihilate the African image, and we come up with the African Senate movement of today. <coughs> yeah, when the war, that way you keep giving back. You're supposed to build on yesterday, but we're letting other people dismantle our, con dismantle our consciousness. So to, let's talk through the steps of how they dismantle and keep us when our images are annihilated where young black men could get on television and actually play the dozens. Your mama so black and ugly. Your mother got big lips. Your mama, first of all, they talk about our queens. They need to be punched in the throat for that alone. But no one steps to them because we don't have a norm. Our norm is can get over, brother, and make that money and get paid, do it. That's not a norm to win a war. So what we have to do is we come up with a norm for what is treason and what is loyalty. As I said before, taking a Nobel Peace Prize from the enemy is an act of treason. I don't care who did it. And tomorrow, if you see me going to take some award, because <laughs> I had just lost my mind. I am no more good to you, but thank you, Whitey. On behalf of my mom and father, I take the Whitey Award for sending black people to the slaughter. You know? <coughs> One more thing on that I should, should really say. <coughs> we take South Africa, white supremacy is done. That's why they're doing everything. If we don't take white, uh, white, if we don't take South Africa and allow them to put a neo-colonial state there, it could continue to steal the precious 
resources that run their space program, nuclear capability, the gold and diamonds, which is the underpinning of their whole economic world. We have Mozambique. We have Angola. We have Zimbabwe. You take Southern Africa, confederate all that, and you're on the move. Boy, I wish Kwame and Krumah was alive. This is what we've been fighting for. The organization that's fighting hard, there's two of them in South Africa, the PAC, Pan Africanist Congress, which slogan is one settler, one, one bullet. bullet. Hey, I'm down with that. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be no other way. What you gonna tell me, excuse me? <laughs> you torture my women? You brutalize my men? You slaughter my children? You gonna tell me, excuse me? Shit. Excuse me. Because <laughs> I know we got children, excuse me. You can't function, nobody does that. Only the African with his unforgiving heart. It begins to look like cowardice instead of forgiving heart. If you take South Africa, you got it. They're scrambling, they're trying to take Somalia. The oil reserves of Somalia will make them rich. They're also gonna use Somalia to quote, to, to control all traffic around the Horn of Africa in which they're also going to put communication satellites to beam their propaganda all over the world. The only reason they want Somalia now is because they can't hold Israel no more. And they're coming to a new world order, which brought to you by the same old folks. If in fact, I'm going off my lecture, but if in fact you see your enemy change its deployment of its troops, you're winning the war. But we have no press, no media, no television, no radio to tell us that we're winning the war. So we act as if we're losing. If you have to drop the Berlin Wall and say, never mind. If you have to say communism, never mind. If you say Croatia and all you other buzzards, let's get together. Because the brothers and sisters are coming, taking back their stuff. We need a new world order. That changing of that configuration alone means they cannot hold the world as they're now constituted. If you look at NAFTA, that's the internationalizing of trade. White nationalists don't like it because they don't understand what's at stake. They're not only scared of genetic annihilation, they're scared we're going to put foot in you know where. Take our land back, our culture, and they're on the brink. We got them. But no one is articulating to the masses of our people that we got them on the run. Every time we got them on the run, we let them up. Every time they get up, they slaughter us for letting them get back up. So to understand what's happening around the world, they didn't go to get Noriega. They went to Panama to control the Panama Canal. And the banks in Noriega, in Black Holocaust, are the banks that they're laundering their drug money. If you don't know that, you act differently than if you do. <laughs> so it's necessary for, and I challenge, that's why I use war correspondent. I ain't no reporter, I ain't no journalist, because them cats is jive. I've been an editor. The stuff used to come across my desk. I said, wow, you gonna print this? No, I said, well, later for you. That's gotta be printed somewhere. Jonestown's gotta be printed somewhere. Waco has to be printed somewhere. Moving Philadelphia, the truth is nowhere to be found. So we're functioning in an invented reality. You know they're working on this thing called virtual reality? They always gave us virtual reality. How many black kids waiting for Santa Claus? How many waiting for a tooth fairy? You should be waiting for no kind of fairy. You know what I mean? Fairy coming to your house. <laughs> African culture don't deal, we'll deal with fairies, okay? So the, the problem is, we're now at the point where the annihilation of African images, and that's what Culture Bandits 2 will be about. I take and I dissect radio and how it's used to keep us insane and keep our images scattered. And as we put part of Africa in our heart, because Africa, our heart is shaped like Africa. And we get the pieces like a puzzle and we be putting it together. And there's something traumatic happening, scramble the pieces out.
in our lives. It could be our wife, our children. It could be crack. It could be drugs. It, but we'll start scrambling after and putting it back together. And then a policeman will knock you down, hit you in the back of your head, and a piece of scramble. And you put it all up, and you begin to begin the, the American dream, and you lose your job, you lose your mortgage, you lose your car, and Africa fall upon you, start putting Africa together. We have to put it totally together, because once that's together in your heart and your mind, ain't no problem. Like they say in Jamaica, ain't no problem. No problem. Once you know what time it really is. Because then you go on the offensive. Start putting the skids and greasing them underneath them. Start taking them down. Radio is used for music. Music is a misrepresentation of our culture. For years what they did was use R&B as the standard of black music. Jazz was a substandard. They couldn't totally understand jazz, so they came and they seized it. They seized jazz and redefined it to something they understood. And then you start hearing Kenny G and Gary Mulligans <laughs> and Dave Brubeck and all these white things running around here trying to interpret our music which they don't understand. Then, more importantly, they set themselves up into the critics and the Grammy Awards and start giving awards to themselves for imitating our music and we don't say nothing. We say, oh, Kenny G, he got it. Jazz. Michael Borton's King of Jazz. Rhythm and Blues. Well, so you have to get that Africa in all together when you can even go for that. Music. It's just there. Music is everything we do how we do it. We use it for fertility rights. We use it in our religion. We use it for social. We use it to have fun. We use it to soothe the blues. We use it just to play with. You know? So then we just play with music. You know? So music is everything. You control the music of our people, you control our people. So the first part of the culture band by you one was strictly music. And laying down how they stole the music, why, and the historical precedence. It was very important that people understand what they do to our music. You know? Because they have it, first of all, they compartmentalize the music. They have jazz, rock, R and B urban contemporary, whatever that may be, <laughs> you know, alternative, <laughs> yeah, that's a new one, alternative, alternative to what, either this music or not, when music is just music to us, there's two important components to music to us, whether we like it or whether we don't, <laughs> half the time we don't understand what the Thelonious Monk is doing, sometimes we don't understand what the rest of the development is doing, but it feels good in our soul, and we'll stay with it until we do understand it. And then the children build upon it. In our young people's hip hop reaction to disco, which was a dynamic reaction, we lost certain things. They weren't using no musicians. Therefore, they weren't creating no new music. They were building on old tracks and sampling. Then that means the culture is stagnated. It's progressive verbally, because rap is more progressive than R&B, because R&B is all can I squeeze your baby, all can I have you baby, my baby left me, my baby loves somebody else, I love somebody else, <laughs> loving you is wrong, I don't want to do right, me and Mrs. Jones, can we steal away, come on, <laughs> you know, it's all garbage, and it makes it seem like the whole society is into infidelity, and if you're into infidelity, you cannot build a home, if you cannot build a family, you cannot build a nation. Families are selling the nation. So music, they get into it and started to decay. They got into rap with the Beastie Boys and Marky Mark and all these white boys running around, you know. They get all up in it and it starts to decay, you know. And then we change forms. You find a, a group like Digital Planets, uh, uh, Diggable Planets, come out. Start using that on a jazz because all the music goes to an infinity. I mean, they can follow us all the way I mean, we go on and on and on. Seen arrested development come and take the whole thing take it from the urban setting because the urban setting are now letting them portray our black kids in sewers with chainsaws and gangster rap and cussing and mussing and all that you know they doing that to appease the businessmen okay the young white boys who getting paid so arrested development countered that and brought it home to the soil Okay, and start singing to their ancestors and had Baba, the elder in the group, and with full cycle. That came out of Atlanta, that's good. You know what I mean? So as you see, we're always 
And they're not the only group that's doing it, but they're the only group that got through the maze of the business apparatus. They did the same thing to Bob Marley and them. They took Bob Marley and Peter Tosh and them, and they first they call it foreign music, and you can't understand what you're saying, and the rhythms are off the measure. Then then once the propaganda st stuff, they say, we better co-opt it because it has a power. So they said, what we'll do, we'll give Bob Marley cancer, just giving instant cancer, just add water and stir. Yeah. Instant one of the healthiest among us. It took Bob down, laid Peter down and blow the back of his brains out. That ain't a hit. Okay? You know, run Jacob Miller off the road, and next thing you know, what was culture reggae and articulated the aspirations of the masses of our people became dance hall of this to the sisters. And they turned the music. Your culture now, your culture was liberating. Not that they ain't struggling now. Just because that's all we hear don't mean that ain't why we, we're we over here struggling for days. Is this still good culture music? Burden's Pear still around? Mm -hmm. And, and, and Burden's Pear teach you one thing you need to know. Marcus Garvey. Mm -hmm. Nobody remember Marcus Garvey. Mm -hmm. Spear. Okay? So that culture is still standing there and it's banging. And this, this dance hall is synthetic. It's yeah. akin to taking hip hop and taking public enemy in them and turning them around. Next thing they're torn with anthrax. Next thing they support a group called Young White or Black Teenagers and they're all white. One got dreadlocks. I don't know how white one got dreadlocks. That stuff don't even lock. That don't lock. You twirl that together and you put the bubble bands on it. It has to. It doesn't lock. So, so uh, uh, the music component. Then radio has another component called all news which there is no news at all. That's what it means, not all news, no news at all. Oh, today Michael Jackson, I'm going to be around. President Clinton cut a ribbon today, such and such and such. <laughs> In Somalia, the troops fed the people, such and such. There is no news at all that you need to liberate yourself to grow. None whatsoever. Donald Trump, you know, rich white people, Perot said, you know, all of this news all the time, no news on radio, none whatsoever. So rather than that for the real, it is all sports. Well, I think the Phillies are going to beat Atlanta Braves. <laughs> Who cares? Two racist teams. One make fun of the red men and the Phillies ain't got no blacks. You know what I'm saying? like the Phillies. They really set you back because they had a little bit of success with as minimum black people. You know what I'm saying? And the best they have sitting on the bench somewhere, West Chamberlain. All sports blue. Or do you think that the Falcons this year could well live a waste of time, waste of time, waste of time? <laughs> and uh, do you think that Muhammad Ali was the best one? Uh, Marciano, uh, waste of time, waste of time. People spend hours listening to that stuff. No information to be found. All sports. It all equals. The music, the all news, all sports equal anti African propaganda. Nowhere can you find anything to liberate self, to deal. There's nothing you can do, nothing whatsoever. That is radio as it's constituted. Then over here you got four hours you can cop for some reggae. I don't know where you're going to fell, find fellow, people like fella, you know. I don't know where you're going to find Sunny a day, Juju, unless Paul Simon plays. Well, wow. wow. <laughs> no, that is the call. That's Elvis mother. It must be. <laughs> now that boy really got hit me. He travels the globe, fronting white people, black people's culture, and getting paid. I had a brother of mine who asked me, he said, You like Paul Simon's Graceland? And anybody know what Graceland is? That's Elvis's house. Elvis is now here's a song with all African music about Elvis's house. <laughs> and nobody, nobody said nothing. You know? That's kind of sad. That means our computers need to plug up. Because Graceland, he's doing that, and the big hit on that, 
You hear the brothers, and you hear that, by the way, you heard of Lady Smith Black in Mombasa, right? Well, you know the lead singer? Well, he went home and the cops blew his face off. Okay? So that's what they think of that, okay? So he's fronting. They say, ooh, 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 ooh. and then Paul Simon was like, he got diamonds on his other oh, oh, shoes. <laughs> Come on, man. That's a class. You know, we're from the States. We know a hillbilly when we see one and when we hear one. We know the hillbilly's relationship to the Klan and white supremacy. We know that's the music of the enemy. So if the music of the enemy is crisscrossing through and beyond and under and up African rhythms, Something's happening there that need to be destroyed. Paul Simon. I'm telling you. You see? Then he goes to Brazil. Then I heard his next stop is Jamaica. You know? He's their A number one culture bandit. He'd be knocked to his knees and make his nose bleed. So that's what radio does. Television is their lethal weapon. See, because when you annihilate the African images, they are visual. And we've got so many coons running around, but no one calls them coons. And we shouldn't even talk about Stephen Fletcher. You know, we shouldn't even talk about Rochester and all of them. Rochester never, and, and Stephen Fletcher and them, as Uncle Tommy as they was, never got on television and said, your mother's so black and ugly and her lips are so big. Boy, I'm telling you. I feel you where I come from, that'll get your chops busted. I mean, up for real. But they're resurrecting that. At the same time, we're trying to put the African queen on a pedestal. They come with a shenane. <laughs> hmm? oh, they come with that Jamie Foxx thing. Make, they're making fun of African womanhood, and that ain't never a joke. That ain't never joke, because that's the fundamental basis of where we come from. And that's our queens and our mothers. Nobody say nothing. You know? Def Jam comedy. What about the onslaught of homosexuality in the African community? Don't you get in front of me! <laughs> the onslaught of, of, of homosexuality is synthetic. And it's brought to you with the help of Shanene, mm -hmm. men on film or men in fitness, and started with with that boy. Uh, what's that? What's that boy's name from Living Color? Who they used oh, yeah, yeah. and oh, threw yeah. them out. Yeah. yeah, and started with them. See, because our children don't know how to process those images. See, we can say, "Oh, that's just a joke." No, our children don't know how to process. Two men feeling on each other on national television. Mm -hmm. It become an option in their life. Mm -hmm. And men dressed as women becomes an option in their life. See? So synthetically, the media annihilates African imagery of the black woman and the black man. We complain about color purple, but yet we allow these brothers to do all this nonsense. And they need to be stepped to. They seriously need to be stepped to. Some of the stuff, you know, in South Africa, Bazania, the war didn't take off until we secured the hood. So when it became impossible for the security forces to stay in the hood at night, then you could raise your children, you could have school, raise them food, move armaments around, and teach the revolution. We've got to control the hood. You control the hood, and you control, that means control the economics, the education, everything. But that's another thing. And we're going to get to that. I'm going to try not to be too long, because I'm going to try to get to the point. The lethal weapon is television, anti-African propaganda. Okay. First of all, that I grew up on cowboys. Cowboys, and you ever see a Tarzan picture? When they're walking on the rocks? And one of the brothers missed them, go, <laughs> and one white man look at another and say, who was in that package? Oh, That's a devaluation of African life. I grew up on that. I know why my generation is crazy, because I was a victim of the same media. That's settled racism. You know what I'm saying? 
He's a pack horse. Somebody asked, is the horse dead? They just asked, what, what did we lose in the package? The cowboy mentality transformed itself in the 60s because we was busting pigs down. I mean, we said straight up war with the pigs. They were so brutal that we, they left us no choice. We all carried guns and we had to go to war with them. You know, and we was buckling. But a revolutionary cannot function. A revolutionary first is not somebody who gets real smart politically and then become a leader of the people. A revolutionary is the people in arms. You have to be of the people, you must materialize out of the people and disappear within the people. And we couldn't do that. Because we didn't politicize the people to know what time it was. We had them at a point, but then the uh, 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 John Birch Society financed something called Support Your Local Police. And what came out of that was all these police shows you see there. Bad boy, bad boy, oh, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Now they want you to see real crime. And they act so, and then they know on film. This is a police officer. Drop that weapon. You have a right to remain. Please, sir, turn around. Walk this way. Don't give me no trouble, sir. Smiling at the camera. You know, as soon as the camera off, they molly hopping, right? And they're giving an image to young people and people who don't understand something that don't exist. 